Welcome to this Manx Methodist service today, led by the Southern team, joining together in worship on this Palm Sunday, the 28th of March, 2021. You can follow the words on the screen or print the sheet from the YouTube uh, alongside this uh, link. We begin today with the breakthrough prayer, which many of you will have used during the prayer day yesterday. Let's continue to use it daily in unity with each other. Let us pray. God of love, God for all, your purposes are more beautiful than we can possibly imagine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to let go of all that holds us back. Open our lives and our churches to new seasons of humility and faith of change and growth. Shake us up with the good news of Jesus and show us the way. Amen. Psalm 118 verses 1 to 2 and 19 to 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Praise 
Jesus, accept the praise we bring. Who in all good delightest, thou good and gracious King. O glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children may sweet Hosanna spring. Let us pray. Lord, open the gates of righteousness so that through our prayer we may enter and give thanks to you, our Saviour and our Lord. Father, we pray for the nations of the world and we remember people living in oppression in Myanmar, Syria, the Yemen and China and others on our hearts, praying for justice and freedom for all. We pray for our own nation, for our government and all those in the care services as we seek to pray in unity and generosity, working together for all. We pray for our community as we continue in lockdown to protect all the people from COVID in the frustration and anxiety that surrounds us all. We are praying for perception and openness for how we cope and support those around us too. We pray for our church, that we will continue to look for ways to shake up our communities to the Easter message of salvation, praying for a sharing in kindness, truth and love. We pray for ourselves and those we love and are concerned for, praying for grace and humility, so that we may reach out to those needing care at present. Lord, open the gates of righteousness, that we may follow the King who rides on a donkey into the kingdom of God. Amen. Let's share together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The reading is John chapter 12, reading verses 12 to 16, the triumphal entry. The next day, the great crowd that had come from the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your King is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realise that these things had been written about him, and that they had done these things to him. Other than during the motorcycling season, we're not much used to the gathering of large crowds in the Isle of Man. And perhaps we're less aware of the experience of being swept along by a great tide of enthusiasm. On the 26th of June 2019, along with a number of other Methodists, I was part of the unprecedented number of people who gathered on Douglas Promenade and marched through the town and up to the Tinwall building. There were about 200 people ranging from a young baby through to a woman in her 90s who took part in the worldwide Time Is Now demonstration to draw attention to climate change. 
I don't know how many people added themselves to the procession as it moved along Strand Street, but it certainly drew a great deal of attention and attracted a lot of encouragement with its whistles, drums, rattles and sheer numbers. People had heard about the movement, they came to see what was going on, and some of them joined in. Everything seems to have gone a bit quiet since. Of course, in these days we have other urgent preoccupations. But globally, the COVID-19 pandemic has brought a number of environmental benefits, notably in terms of air quality and water pollution. It's almost as if the life within the natural world is fighting back, as if some good is going to come out of these dark times, which we could see as some kind of allegory of the events of this coming week. According to John's account of the events on the day that we now call Palm Sunday, the crowd was in Jerusalem for the Passover feast. But when they heard that Jesus was coming, they went out to meet him. As Jesus and the people who were accompanying him from Bethany and the crowd from Jerusalem merged together, it brought together his friends, the curious, the militant, and no doubt the opposition. This huge gathering of people joined together to acclaim Jesus, caught up in the excitement of the moment. There must have been many people in the crowd who were wondering where it was all going. But only a few days later, they were shouting for his death. His strongest and most outspoken supporters had melted away. Some of the crowd would have been there just out of curiosity to see what all the fuss was about. The zealots would be hoping that Jesus was going to lead a major insurrection. The sick would be hoping for a cure. I'm not sure that the hostile religious leaders would have expected that their wish to silence Jesus would have been granted quite so quickly. Crowds are fickle. There's huge power in crowds but they are made up of individuals who were so easily swayed by the mood of the moment. The exuberant mood of the crowd on Palm Sunday soon dissipated and many must have been very disappointed, if not in despair. The journey through Holy Week turned into anything but a celebration of victory and deliverance. It did not end well. Or did it? Why did Jesus resolutely pursue this path? How much was the outcome down to the speed at which the mood of the crowd turned? If the crowd hadn't shouted for Barabbas, would the outcome have been the same? It could have ended so differently. Jesus could have changed his mind. We know from the account of the night in the Garden of Gethsemane that he thought about it. He could have turned his back on the crowds. He could have walked away. He could have gone back to Nazareth. He could have taken up carpentry again. Or maybe joined his friends as a crew member on their fishing boat. He could have been with his family and spared them the awful spectacle of his execution. But he didn't. It was the crowd that changed their mind. In the Book of Lamentations, Jeremiah uttered a cry of anguish as he surveyed the destruction of Jerusalem and the sacking of the temple by the Babylonians. He said, Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow. This is the same thought 
that we are left with at the end of this week that begins with so much excitement, joy and celebration. How do you respond today? Not so much to the triumphal Jesus riding into Jerusalem with so many different expectations and levels of understanding, but to the events that followed in such a short space of time. How do you respond to the lonely figure dying on the cross? What drove Jesus to do this? The crucifixion shows God's agony as he looks down on a world where there is so much suffering. But it's also an image of God's love for humankind, for us all. Edward Burns wrote, Tell of his death at Calvary, hated by those he came to save, in lonely suffering on the cross. For all he loved, his life he gave. The execution of Jesus is absolutely central to what Christianity is all about. The message of Holy Week is transformational. It is as much about, or rather for us, as it is about Jesus. It ends in apparent weakness and defeat, but within it lies the source of unimaginable power. Are you perhaps feeling, particularly in current circumstances, that your life is not going in the way that you expected it to? Stephen Cottrell, the Archbishop of York, in his reflection on the BBC Sunday Worship Programme last week said, Jesus doesn't see crowds. He sees us one at a time, each one unique each one precious. And this is how Jesus looks down on us from the cross. He looks down on us all as individuals. And he is alongside us in our disappointment, our despair, our loneliness, and alongside all of the suffering in the world. Brian Wren wrote, In every insult, rift and war, where colour, scorn or wealth divide, he suffers still, yet loves the more, and lives, though ever crucified. As you reflect on the events of Holy Week, will you change your mind about Jesus? Will you let him, who was crucified, transform you? And will you work with him to transform the hearts and minds of others so that the lives of our families, our friends, our communities, our nation and the world will be changed? Come back in a week's time for the next instalment and see how all of this works out. Have you heard God's voice? Has your heart been stirred? Are you still prepared to follow? Have you made a choice to remain and serve? Though the way be rough and narrow, will you walk the path that will cost you much and embrace the pain and sorrow? Will you trust? Use your voice 
Will you not sit down when the multitudes are silent? Will you make a choice to stand your ground when the crowds are turning violent? Will you walk the path that will cost you much and embrace the pain and sorrow? Will you trust? When friendships start, will you share your faith with faithless? Will you walk the path that will cost you much and embrace the pain and sorrow? Will you trust in one who entrusts to you the disciples of tomorrow? Have you heard God's voice today? Has your heart been stirred by the Holy Spirit? Let us draw close to our loving God in prayer now. We begin our prayers with a time of silence when we can bring our personal confessions to the God of grace. Loving God, there are times when we struggle to believe that your love and grace could possibly include us. Give us the assurance we need right now as we pray. Forgive us that we have strayed from your will and purposes for our lives and have failed to be the people we long to be often hurting others through our selfishness and thoughtlessness. Lord, forgive. Thank you that the light you shine on our lives challenging us is the same light that illuminates the way back to you. And that way is through your Son, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus that your life, death and resurrection reveal God's love for us and your outstretched arms on the cross invite us to receive forgiveness and new life through the Holy Spirit. Thank you Holy Spirit for your work of transformation in our lives day by day. Loving God, we offer our lives to you now. Lord Jesus, we say yes to your invitation and welcome you into our hearts and lives. Holy Spirit, we submit to you as you mould us and make us new. 
then send us out in your name to bring your light and hope to those who need to hear the good news and give us the courage to point them to Jesus. Amen. And a blessing on this Palm Sunday, as we go on with our day, may we all know the blessing of God Almighty as the Spirit leads us on in the power of his wonderful love. Amen.